Hi guys, it's Thelma Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today we are here for a how to crochet for absolute beginners. I have done a video similar to this, not quite as extensive, way, way back when I first started doing YouTube videos, but my quality was horrible. So now that I have a decent camera and I see more and more people learning how to crochet, I thought I'd do my own video on how to crochet and do it with just the better stuff here. So today what we're going to talk about is we're going to learn how to do a couple different things. Number one, we're going to learn how to hold your crochet hook. Number two, how to make a slip knot. Number three, how to crochet a chain. Number four, how to single crochet. Number five, your tension. Number six, how to weave in your ends. And we're also going to talk about hooks, yarn, what does worsted weight mean? What do I do with all the plethora of crochet tools that they have? We're going to talk about that. And then we're even going to learn how to do a magic circle. So this is part one of this series. And the fun thing about this is, is you will determine the other parts. So if I get enough feedback on this video and I get people who like it and want to learn, um, all you have to do is comment below um, if there's something within this video um, that you didn't understand or that I missed um, and you want to go into it further, leave a comment below. Um, if there's something else you want to learn, leave a comment below and you will be the focus of my next video. So if let's say um, uh, Brenda Smith, we're making up a name here, comments and says, hey, I want to learn some more about um, how to do a magic circle. That really didn't make sense to me. Then my part two will be for Brenda Smith on how to do a magic circle. So guys, please comment, please share, please like, because you're going to make this whole series happen. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to discuss all this stuff here. Okay. So we've got many 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 different size hooks we've got t little tiny hooks we've got huge hooks big big ones um, we've got metal ones or aluminum rather we've got plastic um, we do these actually are metal these right here i think are metal because they they attach to my thing um my magnetic thing so i know that they're metal and then we all also have ones that are shaped different so we've got hooks that look like this they're a little flatter and then we've got hooks that look like this okay um those are mainly the different way that they look um, and then we've even got ones that are pointier than others. We've got hooks that, um, let me see if I can find one that's really pointy for you guys. I think this one's really pointy. Let's pull this one out. And look at that. It's got a really, really high point on the end. Whereas these are more blunt looking. So let me tell you, if you're first starting to crochet, and you want to get all this stuff great you go ahead and do it it'll eventually come into purpose for you and you will need them but i can tell you this is my trusty crochet hook it is my favorite one i have all kinds as you can see i even have wooden ones by the way these are great to hold and fun but this is my go-to favorite hook when i lose it i freak out um so anyways, yes, and this is just a five millimeter size H hook. It is the most common one used. It is the most common asked for on your yarn, okay? So if you want to learn how to crochet and you want to go buy some yarn, go, go to Walmart, go to Hobby Lobby, go wherever, get you a cheap size um, five millimeter hook and get you some cheap yarn and that'll get you going, okay? So that's really all you need there. All right, now, we're also gonna talk about other things that you may need eventually. You may need um, a measuring tape. I use this when I'm making beanies and stuff, or cows, and you need to know how long they need to be. And as you watch more YouTube videos and read patterns and stuff, you're gonna learn about stuff like that. So, the next thing I wanna show you is yarn. Look at all that mess. How in the world do I read this? Well, first of all, we're looking at the crochet portion, okay? Because this is crochet. 
This is knit. So you want to focus on this, okay? So this is calling for a 5.5 millimeter hook. Now, just so you know, guys, you can use a 5 millimeter hook for a 5.5 worsted weight yarn, okay? So just to let you know, you can use that. Now, I've said a big word there, worsted weight. What does that mean? Okay, so this kind of yarn here, this normal size yarn, and this is the best way I can explain it. If someone knows better and wants to comment below, go for it. But this kind of yarn right here, basically most of your acrylics is worsted weight. And then you go into the bulky type yarn. This one's really bulky, okay? But your worsted weight is gonna have different sizes. So this is a size four medium. Okay, and this is basically what you're going to see when you buy yarn. You're going to see a lot of four mediums. Okay, and this calls for a 5.5 millimeter hook. This one, okay, is another one. This came from Hobby Lobby. And if I'm looking down here, it says that it calls for a 5 millimeter hook and that it's a size 3 medium. Okay, or no, I'm sorry, it's just a size 3. It doesn't say medium. Okay, so this is a size 3. Okay, then it even gives you instructions. Sometimes it gives you instructions on washing. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Um, then it also tells you the yards. This is 810 yards. This one was 295 yards. Then it gives meters. It tells you what it's made of. This is 100% acrylic. This one was 90% acrylic with nylon in it. Okay. So, you know, you're going to see, this is basically how you read this, but it tells you what kind of hook you need and um, tells you uh, what kind of worsted weight yarn it is. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. That's how to read your yarn. Um, and this just came from Hobby Lobby and it wasn't $9.99. I got it on sale. <laughs> okay, so we've learned about all that. Let's talk about stitch markers, okay? So you're going to eventually, you're going to use stitch markers. You can even put them in the beginning and the end of your projects when you're learning how to use them. But I just dropped my stitch marker on the floor, and it's way over there, and it's all set up here. But basically, they sell stitch markers in the store that you can buy. They're little plastic things that you put in. Um, or you can just use a piece of yarn, okay? So that's something else you might need later, but really, you don't need it now, okay? So when you're going to crochet, this one, so nicely, has one that I pull out of the middle, okay? When you're learning how to crochet and you're going to buy your yarn, please try to find ones where the middle is coming out, okay? Because oftentimes it's coming this way around and that's really hard to work with, especially if you're just learning how to crochet. So when you go to pick out yarn, try to get yarn that's coming out of the middle where you can just pull it very loosely just like that and you can try it out in the store, okay? So. First thing that we're going to learn how to do today, we're going to use our, our yarn here. We're going to use our five millimeter hook. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, we're going to talk about a darning needle. Now I call this a darning needle, but it can also be called a tapestry needle. Okay. Or a crochet needle. Okay. This is a hook. This is a needle. This is what you're going to use. Okay, and I just keep this on here with my magnetic stuff here. This is what you're going to use to tie, to pull, um, to weave in your ends when you're done to keep all your work together. And I'm going to show you how to do that when we get done here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, okay, is you're going to do a slip knot. So I'm going to show you how to do a slip knot. We've got all our tools. We know about all this. So let's do a slip knot. Okay, so. You want to wrap the yarn around your two fingers like this. Just like that. Let me do that again. Taking the end, going around your fingers like that. Just like that. Then you're going to take your hook, go under, and pull this through. When you do that, you're going to pull the end. Then you're going to go up 
and your hook's gonna already be there. Now, you can also do it without the hook if it makes it easier for you. Doing the same thing, wrapping around your fingers, just like that. Instead of using the hook, you're using your fingers and you're gonna pull through, okay? If that's easier for you, you can do it that way and then you can put your hook in. Now, how to hold your hook and your yarn, okay? This is a tricky thing. People teach it, there's tons of videos on how to do it, but the real thing is, is you're gonna learn how to hold your hook and your yarn the way that's comfortable for you. I'm still gonna teach you how I do it, but as you learn how to crochet, you're gonna eventually find something that suits you perfectly, okay? So the way I hold my yarn is I just wrap it around my pointer finger. So, and it's kind of funny teaching because it's just something that I do without even thinking about it. So I was like, well, wait a minute, how do I hold them? But basically, I just wrap it around my middle finger. So it's working through just like this. Now you're gonna see other people, they put it behind their pinky, they wrap it around a couple times. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. But this is the way that I learned how. So it's just wrapped around. Now this, is, this part is over here. So the working yarn, the yarn that's coming out of the skein, is just going around like that. And this piece is hanging down just like that, okay? This is what controls my tension, okay? The way that I hold this finger tightly, loosely, the way I use that finger is all about my tension, okay? So, how to chain, okay? How to crochet. So we've done our slip knot, and for me doing all that, that's a little bit turned around there, but basically we've got our slip knot on our hook. I'm holding my middle finger and my thumb right here to hold this in place. I've got this wrapped around my pointer finger. And what I'm gonna do, watch what I do guys, I'm going to grab my yarn or what people like to call yarn over. So my yarn is going over my hook. So I'm yarning over and watch what I do here. I'm twisting, turning my hook to go through, just like that. And that's one chain. Let me do that again. There's two chains. There's three. There's four. There's five. There's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, there's 10, okay? Now, this, when you're learning how to crochet, this is what you need to practice the most. You need to practice chaining the most. I'm gonna teach you how to do other stuff on here, but mainly this is the thing you need to keep practicing over and over again because this is what's going to teach you how to get your tension right. It's gonna teach you how to hold your hook, how to hold your finger, what works best for you, okay? But let's talk about tension for a minute, okay? First of all, how we turn our hook and how we hold our yarn is gonna be the hardest thing about crocheting. Okay, so if I'm holding this super tight, I'm putting a lot of grip. Do you see that? It's even changing colors. When you're learning how to do something, a lot of times we get tense. Um, <clears throat> our shoulders will get a little tense and we won't even mean to. So try to be mindful of your body. Try to keep your shoulders loose, your arms loose, your fingers loose, okay? Not too loose, but loose, okay? So if, but I wanna show you, if I do this too tight, I'm not going to be able to get it. I can get it through, but it's hard, okay? So it shouldn't be that hard. And look at the difference already. You can see. And sometimes you won't be able to go in at all, okay? If I hold this tight enough, I won't even be able to go in, okay? So 
Let's go back down to where they're good down here. <laughs> but the way I'm holding that tension is with this finger, okay? So if I'm keeping that finger, the, the yarn is gliding. Do you see? It's going through there just like that, okay? So if I keep that pretty loose but not too loose, I'm going to get a chain that I think looks good, okay? So another thing is if you try to go through without turning your hook, okay? So I showed you, you put your yarn over your hook. You're holding your chain with your two fingers and you're turning to go through like this. So I'm picking up my yarn, turning and going through. Now, if I don't turn, see, I, it's hard for me to not even, but if I don't turn, if I just get it like this and go through, look, it's not gonna go through there. Like what is going on? Or if I try to force it through, it's, look, then it's just gonna come off, okay? So that's very important. You want to turn the yarn to go through. Okay, just like that. And I'm just keeping my tension loose. Now another thing you can do is do it too loose. So, and this is where this, see how I'm holding my hook here? So I've got my slip, I'm still working my chain here. And um, if I do it too loosely, like say this is too loose and this is too loose, then if I'm just doing this, it doesn't look bad. I mean, you can do that if you feel more comfortable. If you want to go looser with it, you can. But sometimes you can make them too big, like this. And then it becomes really hard to work into. So you see these are way too loose, okay? But look at what tension does. And this just goes to show you. Here at the beginning, I'm just keeping a medium tension. So I've got a decent looking chain. Then I'm keeping a looser tension, and then I'm keeping it even looser, okay? So that just goes to show you what happens with your tension, okay? So that is how you chain. That is how you hold your yarn, and that is how you do a slip knot. So now we're going to learn how to single crochet, okay? So... We've done our chain, we've done all of that, and now we're going to do a single crochet, which means we're going to work into these chain spaces here, okay? So, you're gonna hear this a lot when you turn your work, okay? So, <clears throat> technically, turning your work would be like turning it that way. We're not really turning it. We're gonna simply go on the top of these, okay? Now, where my yarn is coming out of right here, this loop right here, we're not gonna work into that. To be quite frank, it would be really hard to do that. Okay, I can't even hardly get in there. But you don't wanna work into that one. You want to work on this one right here. And what you'll hear in a video or in instructions is, or in the patterns, you're gonna see chain, I mean, single crochet one into the second chain from the hook, okay? So because they're counting this one here, this is the second chain from the hook. So we're gonna go right in to this. You've still got a loop on here. You're gonna go right into this one right here. You're gonna pull your yarn through and you're going to do a single crochet. That's how you do it. And you go to your next your yarn through and go through both loops on your hook again go through your next pull your yarn through go through both loops on your hook so I'm just gonna go real slow here going through we've got two loops remember we're turning to bring in that yarn. And again, now if you can see where I'm going through, right here, is I'm just going right into the middle of that chain. 
pulling my yarn through, going through both loops. And again, and again, and again. And that's how you would do a single crochet. Now, I would like to go all the way to the end though and show you how to turn your work in case you wanna practice and you wanna keep going, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna keep doing single crochets slowly all the way down. Pull out my yarn a little bit and so here we're at the last one here now what you can do when you're first starting what you can do is you can put a stitch marker at both ends so you know where to go okay so I'm just gonna take some yarn and this will show you also about stitch markers so I've just got another color here because you do want to use a different color than the one you're using so it'll stand out okay so you could put a stitch marker here okay where you just ended And then you could also go right back here to the beginning and put another stitch marker. And that way you'll know exactly where you need to go, okay? So we did our first row of single crochets and that's what they look like. And then we have stitch markers in the beginning and the end. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one Just like that and we're going to turn our work around and you see where that stitch marker is that's exactly where we need to go so we're gonna go right into there and do another single crochet and then into the next right into these little holes and do another single crochet And you're just going to do that all the way down. And guys, when it comes to crochet, practice really does matter. The more that you do it, the better you're going to get. And it doesn't have to be projects. Obviously, when you're first starting out, you want to do something, so you want to do it quick. But spend some time when you're just watching TV um, and you have downtime or whatever you're doing. Um, and start doing some of these single crochets and some of these chains um, and just keep practicing till you get your tension right and you find out how you want to hold your hook and what works best for you. So now that we have our stitch markers in both the beginning and the end, I know that I need to put one more single crochet right there. Okay. And then I would put my stitch marker right back. And this is just until we can get the hang of things and we know exactly where we need to go. But believe you me, people who've been crocheting for years sometimes use stitch markers, okay? And then you would do the same thing again. You would chain one, turn your work, and then right there, right where you need to go, you would do a single crochet and you would just keep doing that all the way down and 
And I want to show you something real quick because sometimes when we learn to do something, we do it, we just could be doing it wrong for a long time. So I want to show you real quick where to be going here. As you can see, there's V's going all the way down here. So I want to make sure that I'm going underneath that V. Okay. So I'm going right under them. I'm not pulling up on either one of these pieces of yarn. I'm going right under the V. Okay. So let me show you from the side. We're going right under. We're not catching one side or the other. We're just going right under both V's. Okay, so that's how you do the single crochets, all right? So let's see here. We have learned how to hold our hook. We've learned how to do a slip knot. We've learned how to do a chain. We've learned how to do a single crochet. We've discussed tension. And now we're going to talk about weaving in our ends, okay? So let's say, and by the way, guys, if you know how to chain and you know how to do a single crochet, you could just keep going and going and going and make a, a scarf. You can do a blanket in single crochets. So you're not having to just practice for nothing. You can practice and make something beautiful at the same time, okay? But let's say I'm done with whatever I'm working on and I'm ready to cut off, okay? So how to cut off? I'm gonna leave a big piece here. First of all, make sure you leave a big piece of yarn because we're gonna work that yarn into our material so that it never comes undone. So then the way I close off is, is I just do a chain, but I just go all the way through, just like that. And then I pull, and then that's done, okay? So now I'm gonna show you how to use this darning needle or tapestry needle, whatever you wanna call it, okay? So uh, this is a rather small one I have right here. I have some bigger ones, but this happens to be what I have on hand. So you're just gonna put your yarn through the needle and you're going to weave in your ends, meaning you're going to go back into your work with this yarn. So I'm gonna go in once, I'm gonna go in twice, and then I might try to go the other way and that'll make it three times, okay? And then you could cut off. Now, if you happen to not have a darning needle or a tapestry needle, but you have all your other stuff, you can also use your hook to weave in your ends. And all you would do is you would just find a place to work in and same concept, you would just go in and then you would pull the yarn through three times, okay? Just the same way, and then you would cut off. So you can use a hook, but I think it looks better and is a little tighter to use a darning needle or a tapestry needle, but you can do it however way you want, okay? But that's how you do that. So we've got one more thing we're gonna learn how to do, and then y'all are gonna leave me a bunch of comments so we can make some other videos, okay? So, we're going to learn how to do a magic circle. Now, there's plenty of videos on how to make them. Um, I've heard it say the magic circle is just a loose slip knot. It is, technically it is. But I'm going to show you the way that's easiest for me, okay? So, to do a magic circle, you're going to put the end that's coming out of your uh, skein of yarn, and you're going to put it in between your pinky and this finger right here. Then you're going to wrap the working yarn, the yarn that's coming out of the skein, around your hand like this, like an X, okay? Then you're going to take your hook, you're gonna go under this piece right here, then you're going to pull this piece and you're going to turn it 
and pull this other side in. Okay? Then it's going to look like this scraggly mess. What you want to do is this piece that's hanging down here, you're going to pull it out to where it's laying flat up against your circle. This, this piece right here that's hanging, scraggling down, is the one that moves the circle. See? It's moving it and making it smaller. This piece should not move your circle. This piece should move your circle. And then what you would do is you would work within the circle to make your stitches. Okay? So again, I'm going to show you that one more time, and I just made a knot on the yarn. So you would go down with this part of your yarn pointing down in between your pinky and this finger right here. Then you would take this piece, wrap it around your hand, making an X. So this piece is over the piece laying flat. Okay, then you would take your hook, you would go behind this piece, pull that up, and go through the loop that is now there. And then this piece right here is what will pull this to make it bigger and smaller. And this is your working yarn. Now, that's one way of how to do a magic circle. Let me show you one other way, and it's called the chain two. That's what I call it anyway. So you would do your slip knot, just like this. You would chain two, and then you would work in the second chain from the hook we talked about before, not this one, the second one. And you would put your stitches into this, and this would technically be your magic circle. So let's just do six. Three, four, five, six. And then you would just pull on this and it works just like a magic circle, okay? So those are two ways on how to do a magic circle. So I just wanna say one more thing and we'll finish this up for today. Um, I just wanna talk about doing something till it makes sense. So yeah, I've got some little notes here for this because I didn't wanna miss out on anything. Um, you know, sometimes we're doing something and it really doesn't make sense um, but we just keep doing it and then one day the light bulb comes on and we're like, oh wow, I know why I'm doing it like this now. Have y'all ever done that? Just do that for crochet. Do the same thing. As you're learning how to crochet, don't let everything bombard your mind at once. You know, just keep it simple. Learn how to do these simple things I'm showing you how to do today. A chain and a single crochet and just keep doing it till it makes sense. Because technically, if you really want to get down into it, all we're doing is a series of knots. We're making knots. That's all this is, is making knots. And then we're putting more knots on top of other knots. And then we're finding ways to make these knots make different things. So it's really wonderful when you think about it. But try not to think about all that stuff. Just, you know, let it flow and just keep your shoulders, you know, calm. Keep your hands calm and just have fun with it. So I hope this was helpful. Please remember that commenting below on what you want to learn next is how we're going to make this series happen. So even if you're not new to crochet, but you want to learn how to do something or there's a certain stitch or anything, just comment below and you can be part of, um, well, you can be the focus of my next video. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions or anything, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks again for watching. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.